we think that we have to clear up some of the misconceptions that are coming across in pieces of uh, news and presentations that are not accurate. Uh, what I have just heard from you, with all due respect, reminds me of a case of uh, simplify and then exaggerate, as the editor of The Economist in the past put it. Um, you know, um, this was not a uh, free uh, exercise of the right of expression and uh, the immovable object wa was not the Spanish government, was the Spanish constitution and well, uh, the, law, the Spanish state. And the the, what? the law as you would see it. But, but do you think the police in every case pushing women downstairs, firing rubber bullets into polling stations, do you think they have used proportionate and legitimate force? Yes, I do. I think whatever force they have uh, used was force on them because uh, they were prevented, prevented from discharging the duty that had been uh, uh, ordered on them by the um, uh, courts, by the judges who were, uh, you know, uh, following the, the decisions of the Constitutional Court and the Sup Supreme Court of Catalonia that held the referendum was illegal. Well, you've obviously got a lot of support from that position, for example, from the European Commission, which this evening has said, just as you have, that the thing has no legal force. So why not just let it go ahead, as happened in 2014? Just let the vote happened, happen and say, well, it has no meaning. Well, look, um, this was presented and organised by uh, the government, the current government of Catalonia, as a binding uh, referendum that could result in the unilateral declaration of independence from Catalonia. And uh, the government, when it's sworn in, uh, is, uh, assumes as its obligation to, to respect the law, to uphold the law. And, uh, you know, the, there was uh, decisions from the Constitutional Court, from the uh, uh, other uh, courts, saying that this refer pretended referendum couldn't go ahead. Well, no one's saying you haven't got the Spanish legal system on your side, but surely you can see the effects of what happened in terms of the court of public opinion is bad for Spain. Violence in polling well, stations, um, it can never be good, surely. No, I mean, uh, we regret what we have seen, but I, um, again, reiterate that this was not a deliberate force. Um, there was violence on the, on the side of those who were preventing, uh, you know, the uh, uh, law enforcement officers to enforce the law. And uh, maybe uh, in, in the last few days, not physical violence, but lots of activities that reminded us of, uh, you know, bygone times and not necessarily democratic times. I mean, uh, I think uh, the Spanish government was defending the right of the Catalans to remain Catalonians and Spaniards and not be uh, forced to abandon the Spanish citizenship. Now, how do you de-escalate this crisis? Is EU mediation, which, for example, the Catalan side has been touting, is that a good solution, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think what we have to do is to, within the confines of the Spanish constitution and the Spanish um, democratic order, uh, talk among all different political groups represented in the uh, Spanish Congress or Parliament and try to find a way forward. Do you think, though, that a Spanish Parliament in the foreseeable future is ever going to actually pass the legislation that would make such a referendum legal? Because Catalans feel they've tried doing this the proper way, time and time again, and they're never going to get past that inbuilt majority against them in the Spanish Parliament. Look, uh, the problem is that um, the Catalans, or a part of the Catalans, which, um, I mean, it's not even majority of the Catalans, cannot decide for themselves the future of the whole of Spain. So if there is going to be a referendum at all, it has to be held throughout the country. And um, we, you cannot rule out that. Alfonso Dastis from Madrid, thank you very much for joining us.